What sort of idiot would try to predict the questions that would come up in the World Quizzing Championships? Hello, my name's Gareth Kingston. This is the Quiz Academy Guide to what might come up in the World Quizzing Championships. Even if you haven't played the World Quizzing Championships before, there are a few things, even at this late stage, that you can do to maximise your chances of doing well. So here are a few priorities for how you can go about preparing. Don't study things about your own country. By that I mean don't try and learn new things about your own country. The chances are that the questions about your country will be surface level for you, but potentially difficult for people from other countries. You don't have time to learn about new subjects in depth. Instead, get yourself some go-to answers and a broad general coverage of likely areas in the hope that some of it will stick. Questions started to be written as soon as the last World Quiz Championships finished. There will be questions related to the last year, but due to the verification process and the process of agreeing the final questions, it's unlikely there'll be much, if anything, from the last couple of months. With any given subject, anticipate the likely non-Anglophone answers. This is the World Championships after all, you cannot expect all answers to be about people who are British or American or generally English speaking. Pay attention to countries or regions that don't compete in the WQC to a great extent. China and Japan, Spain, Africa, Central and South America, these are all seen as neutral territory, favouring no particular country. If you're more of a pop culture player, there are probably greater rewards to be had in focusing on the more traditional genres where the canon changes little from year to year, and this learning will pay dividends going forward, more so than trying to cover off all pop culture bases. But if you're strong in the traditional canon, concentrate on recent developments in those areas before moving on to the pop culture arena. The quiz itself, there are eight genres and this year you won't be able to drop a poor genre for the first time, so it's even more important to be able to pick up the level one and level two questions in your week's subjects. As I said before, you don't have time to learn new subjects in depth, but you can prioritise some topics to get an overview of and an idea of what's important or significant. These will give you your go-to answers. So here are some genre by genre tips on what to consider revising using Wikipedia, lists, books or whatever subjects you've got. Then make some notes of what you might think come up and then refresh your memory just before the quiz. And to make myself a hostage to fortune, I'm going to also suggest some answer lines that might come up. And if they don't, hopefully they'll still be of interest to you. Throughout this video, I'm going to use the term foreign language to mean non-English, just for brevity. Culture architecture, fine art, museums, mythology, philosophy, religion and world cultures. Architectural styles and architects will come up, so check out some basic lists of those paying attention to etymologies which are often included as clues, for example Rococo being derived from the word shell. Museums often come up in the form of this museum is in which city or country. But several times in the past new museums have come up or new branches of existing major museums while the new National Museum of Egyptian Civilization might not come up, the Humboldt Museum in Berlin, the Munch Museum in Oslo, and the X Museum in Beijing might, not least because they also lend themselves to being picture questions due to their architecture. With mythology, there's always a good chance of Greek, Roman, and Norse deities coming up, but check out other mythologies, particularly those associated with competing nations. Sanskrit epics come up, and the Kalevala from Finland has come up more than once, as has Irish mythology, but again, think about major mythologies of non-competing countries. Schools of philosophy come up, and if this isn't a strong area, focus on Greek schools and the main philosophers associated with them. World cultures could be anything, from traditions to events. Skip that, it's just too big. Entertainment, ballet, classical music, film music, jazz and world music, opera, pop music, radio and television. With classical music and opera, perhaps refresh your memory of composers, works and eras, but do it in general. Definitely don't ignore 20th and 21st century works or composers, likewise modern virtuoso musicians. Now the setters should be looking to ensure diversity, so Misty Copeland, the ballet dancer, could make a reappearance. In pop music, J-pop and K-pop are likely to come up because they tick the box of non-competing countries, but they are also major in their own right. The Grammy Awards are a fertile source of information. Look at those for jazz, world and alternative rock. It's a really good way of picking up the contemporary movers and shakers, but also perhaps spotting the more traditional artists 
who have recently uh, returned to the musical fray. So look out for that. It's also worth looking at national or regional music genres, such as Afrobeat in West Africa and High Life in Ghana, or Fado in Portugal. Foreign language pop that's been a hit throughout Europe often comes up, and again, global hit makers, perhaps not in the English language, are always worth looking at. Radio rarely comes up because it's very local in nature. You might get the odd radio personality who's crossed over into other media, but radio in itself very often doesn't come up. TV has broadened to streaming services, so it'd be well worth looking up South Korean shows that have featured on Netflix or Amazon Prime in the last few years. Squid Game, probably a little bit too obvious, but you never know. Encanto was a sensation last year and won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film and also was nominated for Best Original Song. So Lin-Manuel Miranda in his pursuit of an EGOT could feature and you need to know about We Don't Talk About Bruno. Mom Theatre doesn't come up much due to its quite local relevance, a bit like radio, but questions could be inspired by the Tony Awards and Girl from the North Country, a musical set to the music of Bob Dylan, feels like a plausible question this year. You're unlikely to get Hamilton, but you might get Dear Evan Hansen because of the recently released film. History, civilizations, current affairs, exploration, famous people and history. Mesoamerican civilizations always come up. Know where and when they were and what their major sites are and that will get you points. Chinese history often comes up, again neutral territory. Check out our video on Chinese dynasties. Another video of ours that could be useful is the video on forgotten women that we did for International Women's Day this year. Check out both of those videos on our channel on All Things Quiz. We will put a link at the end of this video and also in the description below. Nobel Peace Prize winners are always a good bet for questions. They are international and they go back over 100 years. So look out for some of those Peace Prize winners that may well come up, including those where it's not an individual but an organisation. Lifestyle, costume, design, fashion, food and drink, handicrafts, health and fitness, human body, new age beliefs, products, brands and tourism. This is a huge subject and anything could come up. It's really, really difficult to call this one. Virgil Abloh, the fashion designer for the Off-White label, has a good chance of coming up though. Having died in the last year, being significant and being a person of colour, Virgil Abloh would be a really good choice of question for the setters. Gaspar Ulliel could come up. He was the face of Chanel Bleu. He was an actor who sadly died earlier this year. He was in things like Moon Knight. Now this combination of topics, the brand of Chanel Bleu and the actor, um, and his modelling. This means he is the sort of person who could be appealing to setters, plus he's not British or American. Japanese terms often come up and the setters like things like the term for buying books but not taking them out of their wrappers or death through overwork. Also Japanese culinary terms are really something you need to know going into these championships. Media. Comic strips, comic books, graphic novels, film, language, literature. Well, graphic novels, manga, animation, they've always been a part of the World Quizzing Championships, but in recent years, they have really developed into a very strongly represented area, and the difficulty level has really deepened in these areas. Having a passing uh, understanding of some of these and some go-to answers would be useful. It's unlikely, though, that it will be surface-level stuff, unless it's something like uh, an answer like Mouse, which is both current affairs and graphic novels. That could come up because of that um, newsworthy nature. Foreign language film is a must. There will absolutely be something in there on foreign language film. There will be classic films in there, but there will also be more recent films. And it won't necessarily just be the actors or the directors or the film titles. There could be other elements related to those films. But you absolutely need to know the foreign language film winners and nominees from the past few years in the Oscars. Literature will include a mix of the classic and the modern with lots of non-English language content in there. Abdul Razak Gurna, the Tanzanian Nobel Prize winner from 2021, may well come up. And I don't know whether this fits in here or whether it fits in in technology, but YouTube could arguably come into the lifestyle area and Mr. Beast is due an appearance in the World Championships, especially after his viral Squid Game video, but also due to his philanthropy and his other business ventures like Beast Burgers. He touches so many points in the lifestyle genre that he would be a really good option to come up this time round. Sciences, exact sciences like chemistry, physics, etc. 
flora, fauna and social sciences. This is a fairly static genre where knowledge of elementary particles, chemical elements and scientific laws will reward you. Recent Nobel winners and their work may well come up as could recent discoveries and by recent I mean the last decade or so. In a grey area there could also be some history of science that comes up so who discovered what, who postulated what theory, it won't test your knowledge of science but it will test your knowledge of who the important people were in the history of science. Sociologists and social science experiments come up such as Stanley Milgram and the Stanford experiment and economists and economic theories come up. Sport and games, which includes games, sports, hobbies and pastimes, records and achievements. In some senses this is the hardest genre to keep on top of as it's ever changing, but there are areas where you can narrow it down. For example, it was an Olympic year, a double Olympic year in fact, since the last uh, World Quizzing Championships. Italy did particularly well at the Summer Games and they're not really going to be represented at the WQC, so they may well come up. Their gold medalists would be worth looking at, including the winner of the 100 metres. The Winter Olympics, of course, always yields questions that appeal to North European interests, so make sure you know who won from Norway, uh, Estonia, Finland, those countries. Computer games, look at the biggest selling games of the last couple of years. Look at the uh, type of game that they are, the plot, the uh, company that produced them, and whether there are anybody, uh, any known names that were involved in voiceovers, perhaps, or any controversies related to them. Uh, look up Cyberpunk 2077 in that respect. For board games, look at Spiel des Jahres winning games. They very much often come up, and you can't rely now on games like Carcassonne or Ticket to Ride or anything like that coming up. These will be games where which will really test your knowledge of board games. So look at the last few years there. Cricket will definitely come up. The only question is whether they're going to bowl us a Dolly or a Yorker. You could have Kyron Pollard hitting six sixes and over for the West Indies against Sri Lanka. It could be New Zealand winning the inaugural Test Championship. Or it could be Ayaz Patel of New Zealand becoming only the third player in Test history to take all ten wickets in an innings. Women's sport will probably have a higher prominence than before. Alexia Pateas of Spain and Barcelona is rated as the best female football in the world right now and she would be a good bet to be an answer line in this quiz. In picture questions, look out for the trophy of the new UEFA Europa Conference League. Check out sporting records that have been set within the last 18 months. Now, setters like to find coincidences or patterns, and the 400 meters hurdles is crying out for a question, with Sydney McLaughlin and Carsten Warholm breaking the men's and women's records at the Tokyo Olympics. Armand Duplantis, the Swedish pole vaulter, might just make it in after breaking the world record twice in 2022. World. Cities, human geography, physical geography, inventions, space technology, transport. Now it's hard to second guess what might come up here. Literally anything to do with the Earth could come up. So maybe refresh yourself on the highest and the longest, etc. And also world heritage sites are always a good bet. Particularly world heritage sites that aren't in the major competing nations of the WQC. It's possible that the conflict in Ukraine might prompt a question or inspire a question about Ukrainian geography, Ukrainian cities. So just refresh your memory on major cities in Ukraine. Beyond that, I'd be tempted to look at space tourism. Space tourism, we saw of SpaceX, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. Maybe it could be the guests, it could be as simple as the name of the vehicles. In the tech arena, computing companies, apps or training platforms and software could come up. The metaverse would be an easy one to throw in here. But equally, they might throw in tech that failed in the past, like Google Wave. One thing that often comes up amongst the pictures are the icons that denote a particular app. So perhaps refresh your memory on apps that aren't on the platform you use. If you use Apple, then perhaps look at Android and vice versa. So there we have it. It's a fool's errand to try and ace the WQC from a standing start. To do well and compete at the top, you have to be internationally minded, hungry to learn and work ferociously hard. But in a quiz with so many players, one or two extra points could make the difference of a hundred or more places. So best of luck and if any of the pointers or advice in this video have proved helpful, please tell us in the comments below. Best of luck.